Greetings everyone, my name is Dr. Jamila Mahmood and I am the Special Advisor to the Prime Minister of Malaysia on Public Health. Today, as I speak to you, the whole world is facing a pandemic. It's a pandemic that we've never anticipated to be so, uh, you know, gripping the entire world. Although it is also a pandemic that we should have anticipated better uh, because we've had so many signs uh, of a, an emerging pandemic. How does then a pandemic or a disaster that arises from natural hazards impact gender? And what are the dimensions where women, uh, women, girls, boys and men are impacted differently in the situation of a pandemic or a disaster? If we look at the COVID-19 perspective, it applies to any other context where there is a disaster. First of all, women are usually more impacted in many different ways. They are caregivers, they're caregivers in the professional sense in our country, in Malaysia and also across the world. We have a lot of women who are nurses, health caregivers, doctors, and often they're also caregivers at home. And therefore the pressure on women uh, to be able to juggle all these duties is very high and the exposure of women to this uh, difficult circumstances is also very evident. Women are also impacted in another way in that their own health as women may be overlooked in the case of a pandemic because of the focus on pandemics itself. And I'm talking about reproductive health, uh, I'm talking about um, obstetric care and other situations. In the pandemic like COVID-19, uh, we also have uh, a problem of gender-based violence. We know that the data is probably incomplete in countries like my own, where women who are confined to home now with their partners are therefore unable to sometimes call out for help. Uh, we will anticipate an increase in the incidences of domestic violence. And this, although is not shown in the data we have now, we are gathering much more information now to point and investigate uh, the impact of pandemics as well as disasters in, in, in other situations on domestic violence and gender-based violence. So what do we do about this? Well, the first thing I think is uh, really to have an awareness that disasters and pandemics impact different uh, people differently and to have a very gender, um, to put on a gender perspective and a gender lens into how we look at the impact, the response and the recovery of women who may be very different from men. I think as a scientific community, uh, there are many other things we need to look at. First of all, it's about the data. We've got to be able to have gender, uh, sex desegregated data, as well as uh, disaggregated also for age. I think this is something often overlooked. It's not just about uh, gender and sex disaggregated, but also age disaggregated. Once we have data, it's better for us to, and much easier for us to really analyze the problem and really have a much more uh, accurate picture of what's going on. The second thing is we need to, we need to look at communication flows. I think often uh, women are unable to access information, uh, particularly in remote settings, and therefore uh, the, the impact of pandemics and other types of disasters uh, could actually result in women not getting the information they need. So perhaps studying the signs of information flows, understanding you know, where uh, information sits and where the gender dimensions of that is also very important. And I think finally, uh, I would say that, you know, as in my role now uh, in government of Malaysia, it's really looking at our policies. How do we ensure that the policies that we uh, develop or we improve or we sharpen will take into consideration gender dimensions uh, and also inclusion, and not just in terms of um, sex, but also in terms of abilities, differently abled, as I mentioned before, ageism, elderly, young people, uh, and other dimensions of gender.